Inshallah, we'll have the last question before we end the session. Mrs. A. Wasim from London, UK. Alhamdulillah, I was born in a Muslim family in Pakistan and I followed my religion as a custom and culture. But when I moved to the UK, I am asked many questions that I don't know the answers of. One of those questions is, why Allah has made ibadah obligatory? Does Allah require us to pray and praise Him and worship Him? If our prayers and worship do not make any difference to Allah's supremacy, then why is it mandatory for His creation to pray to Him? What logical answer can satisfy those who believe in reason, logic and science? <clears throat> this is a common question asked by many non-Muslims that why does Allah and Islam require us to pray to him? Why does he require the Muslims to praise him? Is he hungry for praises? Why? If he is ultimate, if he is superior, if he is the greatest, why does he require this? The reply to this question is given in the verse of the Quran of Surah Furqan, chapter number 35, verse number 15, which says that you are in need of Allah. Allah is free of all needs, worthy of all praises. Allah says that, O oh, human being, you are in need of Allah. Allah is free of all needs. He is worthy of all praises. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why does he require us to praise him? So we say, Allah Akbar. Does it mean that when we say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest, does it make him greater? Allah is already the greatest. Whether you say Allah Akbar one time, or hundred times or thousand times, it will not make Allah greater. Even now, Billah, if the non believers, if they abuse Allah, it doesn't make Allah little at all. Similarly, when you praise Allah, it doesn't make Allah greater. He's already the greatest. Whether you praise Him or don't, whether you pray to Him or not, it doesn't make any difference to Him. Then why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala require us to pray to Him or praise Him? Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Dhariyat, chapter number 15, verse number 56, Ma jinna wal insa illa That we have not created the jinn and the men, but to worship him. That means the men and the human beings and the jinn have been created not but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason we praise him, the reason we pray to him is because that is how the human psychology works. Normally, we follow the advice of people who are wise, the people who are famous, the people who are known for that. For example, if your mother has to undergo, if she has a heart problem, and if a common man comes and tells her, take this treatment, will you follow? And the answer is no. But if you know of a heart specialist, who is well known in the world as number one, if he comes and gives advice, that take these medicines for your mother. Will you take or not? And the answer is yes. Because you know him that this person is the best world famous heart specialist. So similarly, when we say Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most wise, Allah is the most merciful. When we say Allah is the greatest, that means he is number one in the world. Allah is the most wise, that means there is no one who has more wisdom than him. So when we say Allah is the most wise, that means we have to follow his advice when he gives. So the reason we praise him and the reason we pray to him is because then we will follow him. If we don't praise him, why will we follow him? This is human psychology. If a quack comes and gives you treatment for your mother who has a heart problem, but naturally you don't follow him. That is the reason in the Salah, which is fard on every Muslim five times a day, the minimum you have to do is you have to read it is compulsory in every salah that you have to read Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha is the first chapter of the Quran, it has seven verses. Now in the seven verses, the first five verses of Surah Fatiha 
it is pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah rabbil alameen ar-rahman ar-rahim maliki wa muddin iyaka nabdu wa iyaka nastain praise be to Allah the lord of the worlds the most merciful the most gracious the master of the day of judgment they alone we worship they alone we ask for help here we are praising Allah we are praising him so that we know he's the best. Then we say, Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim. Show us the straight path. Sirat al-Ladina namda alayhim ghayr al-Makdubi alayhim al-Dalli. The path of those who have earned thine favor, they're not the path of those who have gone astray. So here Allah, if you read, it says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. Ar-Rahman al-Rahim. Maliki al-Muddin. Most merciful, most gracious. Maliki al-Muddin. The master of the day of judgment. They alone we worship, they alone we ask for help. So the first five verses of Surah Fatiha is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it says in verse number six, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Show us the straight path. Sirat al Ladina namta alayhim, ghayril magdubi alayhim, waladdalim. That the path of those who have earned thine favor and not the path of those who have gone astray. So here also we are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the most merciful. He is the master of the day of judgment. He is the lord of all the worlds. They alone we worship, they alone we ask for help. And then we say show us the straight path. And then the path of those who have earned their favor, not the path of those who have gone astray. And then after Surah Fatiha till the end of the Quran is the guidance. Surah Fatiha is also guidance but that is the mother of the book. That is the opening chapter. And then after that is the full guidance. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to praise Him so that it benefits us, not because it benefits Him. So this is a wrong thinking. It will not benefit Allah at all. Now when we praise Him, we follow His advice. So what happens in the Salah? Salah is the programming to righteousness. Then we are getting guidance. Allah is saying, Ya ladhina amunu, O you believe, most certainly in toxic and gambling dedication of stone divination of arrows these are certain handiwork abstain from the handiwork that may prosper here we are getting guided now who is saying this ar-Rahman ar-Rahim most merciful most gracious alhamdulillah rabbil alameen the lord of the worlds the lord of the world is saying the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. If he's saying we have to follow the advice. So the reason Allah is asking us to praise him so that we benefit us, not because we benefit him. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Kahaf, chapter number 18, verse number 109, that if you convert the ocean into ink, yet the words of Allah if you convert the ocean into ink, yet the words of Allah will not be exhausted even if you add one more ocean to it. Allah says in Surah Luqman chapter number 31 verse number 27 that if you convert all the trees on the earth into pen and all the ocean into ink back to a seven ocean, yet the words of Allah will not be exhausted. That means even if you convert all the trees into pen and all the ocean into ink, even if you try to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet it would be insufficient. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to praise him so that we follow his advice and it will benefit him. So he gets happy when the human beings are benefited. It makes him happy that the human beings, after praising him, they are following his advice and they are benefiting him. That is the only reason happy. He is not happy because he wants to be praised. He is happy because after praising you will follow his advice and after you follow his advice it will benefit you. So Allah is happy that his creations are being benefited. So it will benefit you, it will not benefit him. That's the reason Allah says in Surah Furqan chapter 35 verse number 15 O ye men, it is you who require Allah. Allah is free of all wants, worthy of all places. And this is the limited time that we had today. Inshallah till we meet after two weeks, after two Saturdays, till then, Assalamu Alaikum 
ورحمۃ اللہ برکاتہ واخر دعوان الحمد للہ رب العالمین